along again, everybody, to In Conversation here at Super League Raw. And I'm absolutely delighted today to have Oliver Partington of the Salford Red Devils with us. Good afternoon, Ollie. Thanks for having me, mate. Absolute pleasure, my friend. Absolute pleasure. Right, we're going to kick off like we always do, just to settle Ollie in and ask him some uh, some questions. So, first and foremost, who's your favourite band, though? Favourite band? Yeah. Uh, it'd be tough to say that. Um, I don't really listen to a lot of bands. I listen to a lot of uh, country music, though, so I'd probably say Luke Combs is my favourite country singer. Wow. Wow, there you go. You heard it here first. Uh, your favourite film? Favourite film? The Gentleman. Nice. Right, here's a good question. If a film was made of Ollie Partington's life, who would you wish to play the lead role? Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, what's your favourite song? Uh, I'd say Better Together, Luke Combs. Nice. Right, let's do it. Play, repeat, delete. Right, play, repeat, delete. Cliff Richard's Devil Woman, Elvis Presley's Devil in Disguise, and Kylie Minogue's Better the Devil You Know. Which one are you playing once? Uh, I'll go with the Elvis. 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 Which one are you playing on repeat? What was the last one? Kylie Minogue, Better the Devil You Know. Yeah, we'll go Kylie Minogue. And you're deleting Cliff Richards, Devil Woman, yeah. dearie me. There you go. That's the mum's turning off. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> right. What three words best describe Ollie Partington? Um, big hard working. If you can class that as one word. Yeah. Um, I think I'm a uh, loyal. If someone would say I'm, I'm I'll back him up. Uh, yeah, I'm just a, a good lad. I think good bloke. <laughs> Uh, play. Well, we'll get your teammates on in the future. They'll uh, be able to back that up or dismiss it at some point, I'm sure. Right. Um, what's your current box set put, uh, on the TV? What are you currently watching on the telly? Uh, well, The Gentleman's got a series out, so I've just been watching that. So it's, it's really good. Fair play. Right. Who's your rugby league hero? Um, I'd have to say well, it's one of the players I've played. It was Sean Lachlan. I grew up, grew up watching him and then coming through the academy at Wigan. Um, Watching him in play and then getting to train alongside him and then play alongside him, yeah, it was a, uh, it's really big for me. And yeah, he's, he's still one of the best loose forwards, I think, to have played again. Fair enough. Uh, and the next question might be the same player. Then, who's been your biggest inspiration since becoming a professional rugby league player? Uh, yeah, I'd say I'd say Sean Lockham was uh, coming through. Tommy the other way coming through with them. Um, but I think my dad's my biggest inspiration. Just he's the one I always go to after games. Um, yeah, he's the one who keeps me, keeps me in check and, and keeps me playing, playing well, and trying to get better every every week. Fair play, mate. Fair play. Who's the biggest joker in the Red Devils dressing room? Uh, it's quite a few of them. They're all, they're all up to their own bits and stuff. But um, I'd have to say Adam Sidlow, uh, one of the older, older fellas. He gets a bit of stick and he's always giving it out. So yeah, it's, I've got uh, Adam Sidlow. Who's the worst dressed? Adam Sidlow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. Now you're prime for some uh, some onslaught, aren't you? After back of that one. What's no, your well, favourite your favourite away ground to play at? Um, I like playing at Saints away, uh, just because of the the hostility and uh, okay, has a good one now. Uh, but I think Leeds Headingley is probably the best best to play at. Yeah, quite a few uh, that have come on have said have said anything. What is it about Headingley? Just the you know the, how big it is, how well supported they are. Um, it's it's really big over there. The, the rugby league in the city, they're like the the celebrities, if you like. And yeah, it's just it's always good going there. It's very professional, and yeah, it's a lot different to um, going to Castleway, I'd say. Uh, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely good every time you play there, and it's always a good game. Talented crowd. We can see a forward pass from Mellon Road, mate. Uh, anyway, that's another story. Uh, we won't go there. Uh, right, okay. Uh, who's the best player you've played with? Are we going for Sean again? Yeah, I'd have to go with, with Lockers. Yeah, he's, he can do it all, can he? He's, he's he's one of the best about it. Yeah. Fair enough. You still got a good relationship with Sean, yeah. Yeah, every time I see him, I'll, I'll have a chat with him and stuff. Obviously, I've not not caught up him properly for a while, but I'll see him this this week while playing with him. Uh, definitely have a catch up. Happy days, mate. Happy days. Who's been your hardest opponent? Who's your hardest opponent on the field of play? Yeah. Um, I think coming through Wigan at the stage where Saints were on top. For, for what was it five years, four years? And I think they were always the 
the toughest games because they were so far in front of us. We had a young squad and they were getting on top of us quite a bit. So, yeah, it was it was frustrating playing against them with how much it meant to me as a, as a Wigan coming through. Uh, yeah, but we finally got a win against them in 2020. That was that was one of my best games I played in. Though. Fair enough. I mean, obviously that's coming up as well. The Good Friday, the traditional Good Friday fixture. You've played in it. I think you're the first person I've interviewed. Actually, no, Dan Sargent's going to play, but I didn't ask him. Go on then, as a player, Saints against Wigan, Good Friday. I mean, I know the the people over in Hull think they've got the biggest one, uh, but you've played in this one. Yeah. Describe it to me, Saints Wigan, Good it's Friday. Just- it starts with the week. I think the build up, all the history, you see all the, the clips coming out of um previous games all the way back in back in the day when you could still throw throw punches and stuff and seeing Andy Farrell and all them um getting stuck into each other. But yeah, it starts in the week, you see all that stuff, you all have build ups, press are all it's all big round Wigan and everywhere you go, people are asking and stuff. So yeah, it starts starts in training. Training definitely ramps up that week. Uh, and you know there's different fields of training and there's always bodies broken after it, and and you, you kind of accept that in the season from Wigan to that that's our biggest game, and that was that we wouldn't be sore after that. So it was it was always that that big big fixture that was was most important throughout the year. And what about the players? Who's the hardest player you've come up against? <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. I've, I've played against against Gareth Hock in the in the championship when I was on loan at Swinton, so that was one of the one of the toughest players I've played against. Uh, I've played against a lot. Saints at the Saints at the peak with Morgan Knowles and all them when they were they were flying. It was it was really tough coming through against them. Yeah. Right. Let's try and describe some teammates in one word. I've selected a few that you're playing with and who you played with. One word that describes these players. Ryan Briley. Quick. Tim Lafay. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get on to that pass later. Yes. Uh Mark Sneed. Captain. Callum Watkins. Grafter. Andy Ackers. Ed the ball. <laughs> Brody Croft. Nerd. <laughs> George Williams. Electric. Sam Powell. Grafter as well. Liam Marshall. Daft as a brush. <laughs> and finally, Sean O'Loughlin. Leader. Right, you've got three dinner party guests that you can bring in uh, to have a, a meal. You're you're not one of them. So three three dinner party guests, alive or dead. Who would Ellie Partington like to share a meal with and why? Joe Rogan. Um, I think if you've seen his, seen his podcast and stuff, he's he's got a lot of knowledge. And, oh, sorry, my dog's just back. Right. Uh, yeah, just... Just all the people he, he spoke with and met, and all his UFC knowledge as well. I quite like the the UFC. Um, who else? I got Kenny Rogers. Love his music. Um, who can I ask from? Got Jimmy Carr. I think he's he's hilarious. So it's a random a random dinner party, but yeah, he's he's a he's a funny guy. You mentioned country a couple of times. Is that through your parents? Is it country music, or is it? Have you gone off on a tangent? Uh, I think it's quite big in in rugby league. Um, I think a few of the Aussies brought it, brought it up because they're quite big on it. Um, but I've listened to it since I was a kid. With my my nana used to always play it. Uh, my granddad. So yeah, it's just been passed down to me from my parents and and stuff. For me and my sister are both both heavily in, into country music. Fantastic memories as well. If it's attached to your grandparents, always good. Right, Ollie Partington, born third of September. Yeah, nineteen ninety eight in Wigan. Yeah. So I'm guessing you're a Wigan fan growing up, are you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. All, my, all my life, had every kit. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, every game. So you've sat, you've been, you've been on the terraces with the fans. Yeah, I've been. I was a season ticket holder. I was a ball boy for Wigan. Um, did all the camps as a kid and stuff. Yeah. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. So walk us through how you got into rugby league. Your amateur days. Just walk us through that early part of your your, your rugby league life. Uh, so I started when I was five. Uh, my dad took me down to Oral St James. Uh, rugby club uh, didn't like it at first because I was I was training a year up because I don't think there was a team my age so um, yeah I started cried all the way through it took me all went back and I just started loving it never looked back since uh, I've made friends for life there. I still speak to speak to them now and yeah I'm very grateful for getting to play a sport a team sport like that since a, since a young age 
Do you get back to all? Do you, do you go back and visit? Yeah, I try to get back, try to get back as much as I can. Um, do presentations when I can, you know, end of year stuff. Um, but yeah, I always try to get watch the open age because a few lads I know I played in that still. Yeah, it's 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 grown massively the Oral St James since I was there. They've got their own club house now. They they never had that when I was there, so it's definitely on the up. And I presume that like most of the professionals, you, you must take great pride in that, and, and you must take that really seriously. Your opportunity to inspire those kids. Yeah, definitely. It's it's not something you really think about a lot. I just probably take them a stride as to everyone else. Um, don't really think about it too much. But yeah, when you do think about it, it's, it's massive for them, for them kids seeing how they can get to a professional level. Because um, I remember when I was, I was playing and I seen other players who were Super League players or what have you, and, and you, you do look up to them and it is massive for them being there and, and you get into play in front of them and, and aspiring to be like them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, how did Wigan spot you? How did the Wigan uh, signing come up, come about? Uh, yeah, they were just scouts used to come down watching our games because we were playing the we were playing the highest division in our in our league, and um, yeah, there was always big games across um, across the league between us and St Jude, St Pat's, and, and Wigan scouts were were always known for being around them clubs, and then yeah, they picked picked me up from there and. That was, I think, I was would have been fourteen, fifteen when they when they signed me into the scholarship, and then, yeah, just progressed, progressed right the way through them. Yeah, it's a great system that Wigan have got, haven't they? Um, you know, they just continue to produce some some real quite something in the water, isn't it, Wigan? Yeah, definitely. I think it's just just bred into them to be to be tough and hard work, and they just love love rugby league and, and all sports really. Yeah, um, just trying to remember. Actually, did you would you? Was Central Park still about? When, I can't remember when you shifted across to to the DW. Did you go Central Park as a child? No, I, I never went. My dad, my dad used to go watching Wigan there. Uh, yeah. yeah, he said it was was class. All these Show me age. All and stuff. It's it's different up to what it is now, isn't it? Show me age. Oh, the old grounds. You know, Central Park, Osley Road, Wildersfield. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh dear. I mean, it was. I mean, you mentioned Castleford. You know, yeah. very. You know, you talk about hostility. I think these new modern grounds it takes a lot for them to become hostile. But yeah, you know, those old grounds, dearie me, you mean Nosley Road, absolutely. I mean, yeah, dearie me. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So in 2018, I believe it was 2018 that you got involved in the Super Super Eights at the time, wasn't it? It was the season of the Super Eights. Am I right? Yeah, it was right. Yeah, I played yeah. my played the first game of the Super Eights against Cass. Made my debut. Uh, we won. It was a good game. And uh, yeah, it was a. It was a massive day for me and my family making my making my debut, especially in such a big game as the Super 8s were. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even remember feeling nervous for the game. I just felt felt ready for it and ready to take my next next step into being a, a professional player. Yeah, I mean, walk again, walk us through that. So, you know, who gave you the call? Who told me, hey, Ollie, you're playing against Cass this week? Um, it, was, who, who... it was Wayne at the time. Um, yeah, just just put me to the side and told me I was I was buzzing just. Ran my ran my mum and dad as fast as I could, and yeah, I think I had a smile on my face right up until the game. I was I was buzzing. It was uh, a dream come true, really. Yeah, absolutely proud moment for you and your family. And of course, in that dressing room that day, Sam Tompkins, Willie Isa, Liam Marshall, Williams, Lula Y, Bateman, and a Mr. Ollie Partington sitting alongside him. When you yeah. were looking around that dressing room, I'm sure the nerves were jangling. What were your thoughts that day? Yeah, I, like I said, I didn't really remember feeling nervous. I just felt ready for the for the opportunity and grateful for the opportunity. I think I'd spent a lot of time in and out of in and out of the coach's office asking what I need to do, what when am I going to play? Probably annoying them as all year. Uh, but yeah, just trying to. Just, I wanted to play so much and and do what I can for the team. And yeah, they just they gave me the call up and I was I was just buzzing. Everyone congratulated me. Got my family in to present my shirt, which is was massive for them and and me. Uh, yeah, it's just a, it was just massive for me. I mean, we've had a few players on because, of course, now Sean Wayne, international coach as well. From an Ollie, for Ollie Partington point of view, Sean Wayne as a coach, what would he? Yeah, he's, he's probably the the ultimate more there. I'd say, um, you know, definitely knows how how to get up for a for a big game and and all the other games. Um, I think he really instilled that that in me. Um, Trying to be a, a, t a tough competitor and competing for everything, and that's sure with the 
in that year when we won it. Um, yeah, it was. He's definitely the ultimate competitor. He's, he's tough. He's he'll tell you how how it is, and if you're not up to standard, he'll tell you. Uh, and if you are up to standard, he'll tell you as well. He'll he'll he's definitely full of praise, and and one should do well. But he's he's definitely tough on the other side. He want what he wants out of you, and what he wants he wants you better every every week. He's a really strong man manager. I think that's been coming across in the conversations we've done up to now. But, I mean, you played another five games in that Super 8 series and you're coming up against, uh, they were Catalan Saints, Warrington, Huddersfield, uh, were in there as well. Um, right, you're up against the likes of Mike McMeekin, Liam Watts, Louis Anderson, Julian Busque, Luke Thompson, Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook, Kyle Amor, Ben Westwood, Joe Philbin, Michael Lawrence. You know, real quality grafting forwards there. This is a big step up, step up from amateur level, Ollie. How did uh, yeah. that? Yeah, you know, I asked the same question. I think of Chris Hill. Can you remember your first big hit when somebody gave you that first professional hit and welcome uh, to Super League? I just, I just remember thinking I'm just going to run as hard as I can, and and hopefully they they learn more than me. Um, but yeah, there were was all tough games. Like I said, they were all so close, and we didn't have an easy game, um, which helped me. I think um, just got thrown in the deep end. Um, straight into Cass when they were at the at the top of their game and and Catalan's away, Huddersfield's a tough place to go. Um played against Saints as well coming at the last minute. Um because Sam I think Sam Tompkins dropped out in the warm up. So I didn't know I was playing in that game and then I, I got thrown into that a derby which we ended up winning. Um so yeah they were all they're all tough games. I think I played against Sam Moore that that year or the year after as well and he's one of the biggest hitters in the game and yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, tough going up against the likes of him. Mate, what you do for a living, I mean, I say this to every guest that come on, you know, we're privileged as fans that you boys put put yourselves through what you put yourselves through. You know, I, I call you gladiators. You're the modern day gladiators. Mm. And, uh, you know, on behalf of every Super League fan, I'm not a Salford fan, I'm not a Wigan fan. It takes two teams to play a game. And I think on behalf of everybody watching, thanks for, for what you do. You bring us great entertainment every week. So thanks for that, mate. Uh, right, that year Wigan go on to beat Warrington in, in the grand final. Uh, unfortunately, you don't play in that game. Of course, this was the you just played in the in the Super Eights. Uh, on the topic of Warrington, let's just get the elephant out of the room. A lot of rumours over the winter that Warrington were 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 in for you in local press and national press. Any truth to those stories? Yeah, there was there is truth to them. Um, I think just with all the stuff around Sopwood's finances. Um, Throughout the off season, it was always going to happen. Obviously, seeing Rodie Croft and Andy Ackers leave, I think it was always going to be be in the press that me and other players were leaving. And the Tyler debris happened early on in the year, so yeah, there was always going to be interest with with all of, all our players really. If if they were for sale, people were asking. And yeah, in the end, I weren't I weren't for sale. I think um, once we let them two go, I don't Rolls Rolls didn't want to let anyone else go, and I knew he needed me for this year and. Yeah, I'm grateful that he he did let that known and say that he wanted wanted me to stay. Obviously, because you do you do always think should I go, or should I not? But I'm I'm glad I've stayed. Yeah, he did. I mean, I said this to Paul when when we had him on. From the outside looking in, it does feel like a really tight knit group us against the world. Um, what's it like to be a part of the Salford at the moment? Yeah, it's that we speak a lot about having a circle. Um, as I suppose a lot of teams do, but we try to keep it keep it within. Our our playing group and, and the staff there, um, yeah, very close and just yeah, it was against the world really. I think everyone wrote us off at the start of the year, uh, all the pundits and stuff. So yeah, that that fuels the dressing room, I think, and fuels a lot of roles. These talks that were being wrote off, and we are the underdogs, and I think that suits us to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get to Salford in a moment. Let's let's go back to 2019 for a moment. This was your real breakout season, 2019. This is where you you set in, but it started. At Swinton Lions, you went out on loan, didn't you? At the start of that yeah. season. Um, talk us about that. How did that come about? Uh, yeah, just just wanting to play. Um, uh, yes, I needed game time, and obviously, I don't think the reserves was was up to standard at that point. Um, so yeah, it was important for me and and other lads who've went out and done it to get to get some minutes under your belt in a in a tough league against big. Big bodies, so it's it's good to get out there as a young lad. With they're not they're not bothered where you 
what team you're on loan from. They just want to hurt you. And I'm, I'm grateful that I did get chances to play there because um, Swinton obviously weren't the best team in the, in the league. So every game was a tough one. Uh, I think I went to Toulouse with them. I went against Fev away, which was a really tough game and a scrappy game. So yeah, it's, it's good to get those those games um, under your belt. And now to look back, it's crazy. Like looking back where I, where I come from with in that championship championship team to play in there and then coming through to playing for Salford against all the big teams. Yeah, I mean, I asked this of, of all the pros that come on. How important is it? I mean, you know, there's a lot of players now in the reserve grade. Of course, dual registration is around. From an Oliver Partington point of view, you know, if these younger players get that opportunity to go out on dual reg, how important for your development was it to go and experience life at Swinton? Yeah, I think I think it's massive. I think they should all they should all do it. If they're not playing in Super League, then go and play in the next best. Uh, I don't think obviously there's reserves games now to keep you keep your minutes up, but it's not going to be as good as getting um, some minutes under your belt against big big players and big names who drop who've played in Super League before and drop down drop down a level. There. Um, yeah, it's in, it's important to play in different systems and and yeah, try and show why you well show the team that you should be in the team and show the coach that you should be playing and. Yeah, just put your best foot forward, I think, playing in, playing in big games in, in tough conditions. Great advice, great advice. Uh, to my knowledge, 23 appearances that season and a first try in a Wigan Warriors shirt coming at the ground that you love, Headingley, uh, to play away from home in a 23-14 win. So that try was very important as well on the day. Special moment for you crossing the uh, the try line for the first time in Cherry and White. Yeah, it was it was class and another dream come true, you know, scoring especially at Headingley in, in a big in a big states game. Um, I did think my try had won it, but Tony Club got a dodgy try given in the in the last few minutes that, that actually seals the win. Uh, but yeah, it was a it's a memorable day, good a good win. Was your family there that day? Yeah, they would have been there. Um, so, if I remember right, they did to my right as I scored, so I gave them a quick look after I celebrated. Brilliant, mate. Absolutely outstanding stuff. And as fate would have it, that season, Wiggy Warriors lose in the semi-final playoff to Salford Red Devils 28-4. A certain Mr Jackson Hastings uh, was on fire that season for Salford. A massive, massive upset. Um, you know, I mean, as well as Salford were playing, it would still be classed as a as a massive upset. And of course, this in your breakout year. Talk us through that night. Um, you know, what, what went wrong for Wigan? That that day, would you say? Uh, we had a we had a young pack out. Obviously, I I think I started uh, oh. probably alongside Morgan Smithies, if I'm if I remember rightly, um, or he would have been in the team. Um, yeah, I think they just had the experience. Was it Gil Dunson and, and Lee Moss up on the on the other end of the forwards? So yeah, they just got the better of us that day, and it was a was a massive learning curve for all of us youngsters in that. And it just shows experience goes a long way, and, and they know they knew how to win them games. Um, and I think that the, the form they built through the season and all the tough tough wins they got, they was it was destined for them to do that and, and us to have a learning curve that day. Yeah, no, it was a brilliant. I mean, that that season, Salford were were incredible. It has to be said. Um, am I right in thinking that 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 year you played for the England Knights against Jamaica again at Headingley? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was a that was a another step in the in a right direction of a dream come true to play for. England Knights because I'd done the academy and I'd done the 16 so I was looking obviously to get into that and then hopefully get into that into the first team in the, in the near future hopefully um, yeah it was like I said it was good to be around a, a probably the most professional event I've been in with being uh, in England so because it's I presume it's exactly the same as the first team we got treated the same and all the training was the same get all the kit and yeah you, you do feel like you're at the top of the game <clears throat> when you're preparing for them sorts of games was it Paul Anderson, uh, obviously the Knights at that time? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah he's what's, a, what's Paul Anderson like? Yeah, he's a good coach. I think he's he's very similar to Wayne in that in that respect. A good motivator. Um, definitely knows what, how to get the right things out, lads, and and that showed with the, with the result we got. Yeah, I mean, you're still only 25. Uh, I mean, you have represented England as as an England Knight. How in, you know international? Um, that's got to be a burning ambition as well. Uh, over the next few years to, to try and break your way into to Sean Wayne's thinking? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I want to put my best foot forward every game. And yeah, that is that is the ultimate goal. I think obviously winning winning trophies and stuff. Um 
is one of my goals and my main goals. But yeah, England, I think if I win trophies and, and get them goals, then England will come, I think. Because when you're playing them big games at the back end of the years and in finals, then that's when, when Wayne is looking and seeing how you're performing in them in them high high intensity games. Just like you did at Wigan, go and knock on his door, ask him what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Find where he lives and go and knock on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, 2020. Uh, you knocked out the Challenge Cup in the semi-finals by Leeds that year, uh, so no uh, no Wembley outing. But you did win the League Leaders Shield, and you went into the playoffs probably favourites to to go and to go and win it, uh, but lost in a well what has now become the famous COVID final at the MKM. You're in the yeah. box seat, I think final seconds of the game, and then of course Jack Wellsby announces himself on the Rugby League stage in in grand fashion. I yeah. mean, as a player, you know. It's euphoric when you're on the right side of that. But go on, walk us through that night at the MKM. Uh, yeah, it was obviously a, a weird feeling walking out. Um, loads of music, loads of um, fireworks going off. <clears throat> None of my family there, which I knew they were all crowded around the telly watching it at all. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a really good day. I was I was nervous for that game. It was freezing. Um, thought I played played the best I've played up until that point, and. Uh, yeah, it kind of felt like just like a big relief when the game were over, but because of how much we give, but they're just a, it's like a just getting a stab in the chest when he scored that. Almost felt like we win even after everything settled. We went back in the change rooms. Everyone was like having a beer, what have you, and, and, and chatting and stuff. And we we felt like we won. We felt like we'd done enough. But obviously, freak things like that happen. Jack Wellsby is a freak and and can do them special things. So it's. It's good to have played in a game that's like now regarded as one of the best best finals. I think, well, in my opinion, it is one of the best grand finals of the recent recent times. So, yeah, it was it was gutting, um, but yeah, it's it's given me that fire to get to get back there every time I play. I think about I think about how we lost in that and how I want to win win that trophy beyond beyond the receiving end of a win. I mean, that must have been that season as bizarre as it was, must have been very similar to going back to your amateur days and the fact that with no crowd noise, you can hear probably your own players' communication better, but also the opposition's communication better. Was What what was it like playing during that COVID season? Yeah, it was, it was weird. Um, obviously, all the protocols that were around, you couldn't be near each other, showers were off in between each other and couldn't sit right next to each other. Um, yeah, it was a very weird season. Um I think, yeah, you could hear coaches slamming desks and, and shouting and stuff in the stand, which you normally can't hear. Um, yeah, you could hear every tackle even even more. And, yeah, the communication was a lot better. But, yeah, we we definitely missed the fans because when you score, it doesn't, doesn't feel the same as when, you, when you're celebrating with the crowd. Yeah. I mean, we're going to get to, to Salford next. But, you know, as a professional, I mean, one of the things that, that I love about our game, and I hope we never lose it, is that at full time, you as the professionals go... Uh, and and properly salute the fans, and I'll say that you know it's this isn't a a little a clap that's not even a clap. I'll just tap my wrist and I'll walk off. Dare I say it as footballers do? This is a proper let's go over, let's have folks talk, let's you know again inspire the kids. You're their heroes. That you know you you are. You know my lads ten his heroes, Matty Ashton. You know you're their heroes, and you give you give the fans the time. Sometimes you're out there ten fifteen minutes after kick off. Um, we 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 cannot lose that, can we, as a sport? No, I think it's that it's massive that that connection that rugby league players have with with fans. Um, I think it's just because they're all so down to earth and, and normal. I don't think there's any any players who are above any of the <clears throat> any of the fans. I mean, if I see any fans in out and about, more I'm always willing to speak to them, have a chat with them, and I know everyone else is. So I think we can't lose that because that is very appealing to to the game. Um, as you say with football they don't have that access to the players and yeah I have I have people from my club messaging me all the time trying to get me down and even there so for the like I said earlier with the presentation I would never say no to them <clears throat> um, yeah I do think it's a massive part of our game that we interact with the fans as much as possible because at the end of the day they are paying our wages and they're spending their hard earned money to watch us when they don't have to Absolutely. And can you remember your first autograph? Can you remember the first time you asked for your autograph? They still feel weird now, giving them out. I still feel like, why Why do they want my signature? But yeah, it's, 
is part of the game. I suppose lads felt like that when I was asking for for those back in the day. So yeah, it's, it's a good feeling, um, but it still still feels weird to do it. Have you ever had a super fan? You know, because like, I see players sometimes, and no matter how many games it is, there's always a fan outside who's waiting. Must have about twenty voters by the end of the season with the same player. Have you ever had one of that? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple that we're going to we they stand outside the the ground and they get a picture of every every player going, and they must they must have hard drives and hard drives full of photos of players. But it must be good to look back on and in a few years and see how many how many faces have actually been through through the teams and stuff. And who is it? Can you remember you who? who... Was the first autograph you got as a as a child at Wigan? Player. Yeah. Uh, I remember. I've got a I've got a picture somewhere. I think my mum and dad might have it of me in the papers stood stood with uh, Andy Farrell. I think it is, and yeah, and, and a couple of other players. I think so. Yeah, that's probably my earliest. I was I was only I must have been about three foot at the time, not <laughs> four foot. Uh, so yeah, I'd have been young, but yeah, that's my first first one I remember. So Andy Farrell. Uh, maybe a childhood hero of yours. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, I can still remember him playing and stuff. And yeah, he was tough as all boots, wasn't he? They don't make him like that anymore. And have you met him since you've been a pro, Andy Fowler? He's been in when I was at Wigan. He did a talk before one of the games, but that's that's all I've had since. Obviously, he's he is a big celeb now, and he's doing all he the is. island stuff. He is, but again, so if he came in as as a childhood hero. Andy Farrell, they all say never meet your heroes, you know, yes, you got your photo took, etc. So when he came into Wigan that day, uh, young, you know, Ollie Parties, and this is a guy I've looked up to as a as a supporter. Um, what was he like that day? As soon as he started speaking, everyone listened. I think without without even trying, he had had authority in the room. Um obviously he's brought in to give us a, a pre match talk and yeah, being in a in a changing room with a lot of Wiganers who had done, who felt the same as me, and watching him growing up, and looked up to him. Um, yeah, I think everyone just straight away listened, and we're back being little kids again. Uh, you know, he's a, he's done it all really in, in rugby league, and now he's doing it in, in rugby union. So you do you do listen when people are speak. Absolutely, yeah. So in 2023, you uh, get the phone call. Maybe I don't know if it was a phone call. And Paul Rowley wants to bring you to to the Salford Red Devils. First of all. This must be a massive decision for you because as a Wigan lad, um, you know, to, to first of all leave Wigan. Uh, talk us about talk us through the decision making process there. Um, it was it was a no brainer really at the time. It was a massive decision and, a, and it, it took a few weeks to decide. Um, but it, in the end, it was pretty easy to decide to go to Salford because they were playing um, such good rugby at the time, and I and I wanted to be a part of that and grow my game, and I felt like. I could do that under roles. Um, obviously, I was I was in an outer Wiggins team, got injured in pre-season, and then they brought in, because we underachieved the year before, 2021, I think it was. Going into that season, we we had a lot of eyes on us, and it was Matty Pete's first first gig as a head coach. Um, so, yeah, I was in and out of the team, and I was frustrated. I'm in chats with him all the time, and I just, I just decided that, I asked him, "Is it is it all right if I look elsewhere?" I think because I deserve to be playing more, and if I'm not going to do it here, I want to do it elsewhere. And then, thank thankfully, he was he was happy for me to go and go and look. But if if there wasn't anything out there for me, then he didn't want me to go. Um, but yeah, we we got to the right deal with Salford pretty quick. And after speaking to Ian Bleed and, and Rolls, I knew that's where I wanted to go and and where I see myself developing the most. I mean, it's fair to say you you have had some coaches, haven't you? You're talking Sean Wayne, Adrian Lamb, uh, you know, Matty Pete's had a part in your career now, now Paul Rowley. Um, just go through uh, the ones we haven't spoke about. First of all, Adrian Lamb, done a great job last year, I believe, Leopards, you know, just completely revitalised that club. Adrian Lamb, the coach, what he's achieved at Lee, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think he's well, achieved with Lee, you know, coming up from, from Championship and then, and then doing that. Is it's probably unheard of. I think um, yeah, he's he's done really well with him. He's a good he's a good man management, good man manager. Um yeah, he's he's a good coach and he's got he's probably an attack focus for Wigan when when I were there I felt. Um which which really helped us. Um but yeah, what he's done with Lee's special and yeah, I can only applaud him for that. It's it's unreal what he's done to the for the town and and uh, well, call it a bus stop in Wigan, don't they? Um <laughs> what he's done for done for Lee over there, he's done a 
he's done a special job and he's still doing it now. Absolutely. And in 22, that would have been Matt Pitt's first season, wouldn't it? From yeah. So that was the season that Lopham became coach and Lee Breers came in as well, yeah? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. So you were part of that mix. Um, again, from the outside looking, I think the year 2021, there was a lot of criticism over the attack of Wigan, that it was a pretty dull. I mean, your coach Paul Rowley said, to me, quite openly, he thought Wigan were dull in 2021. And then in 2022, Lee Breers came in. What was the... I mean, that was a massive shift because all of a sudden, you were, Wigan were easy on the eye again. What 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 happened? What were the discussions like going into that season with the new coaching setup? I think Matty kind of gave... Um, he gave Lee the, the job of sorting it out. And, and Lee Breers definitely led the... The attack side of things got us walk, walking through things for the start of the week, and then we'd run through them at a higher pace on the, the day after, and then at the highest pace, like a game intensity, the day after that. So I think that that's what they brought in as a coach and staff, and, and yeah, it seemed to work. I think Breeze Lee Breeze was was so heavily involved in that in that stuff that it it only just come out on the field and it and it got the best out of Jay Field and and Bevan French and obviously the two electric players and. They take some stopping on the on the worst days, never mind the best days when they're playing with the with flow and attack and, and everyone knowing the role and stuff. Yeah, I mean that's muscle memory, isn't it? Building up muscle memory, uh, slowly but surely, which is a fascinating insight because we don't see you train. Uh, yeah. so that, that walking pace and then slowly build it up for, for game day. I think that's a really interesting insight. And so what was Locker's uh, uh, job in the mix? Breeze is doing the attack. Uh, was he was Locker's more defensive though? Yeah, he was defensive, he'd take all our wrestling. Our wrestling and, and contact drills, and sit in the video with with the middles, especially um, looking after a bit of our attack as well through the middles, uh, and but mainly defence and and obviously his expertise having playing for was it nineteen years, twenty years, something like that. Um, obviously, it helped massively in all of our development, even what he has to say first and foremost, and us having a, a say on the back of that. Uh, so yeah, it was. It was massive because Lox is really into his wrestling and stuff, so it's he's always looking for new techniques and how to, to gain the edge on on other teams. And I suppose they've they've done that last year and definitely worked last year. Incredible. Absolutely, it worked. It worked last year, and, and and of course Matt Matt Pete very very similar. I mean, comes across very similar to to Sean Wayne, but not if that makes sense. I mean, really, I think he's a little, comes across a bit calmer than than Sean Wayne, but there's that underlying steel to it. Uh, where I mean, you were saying about Wayne, it, you know, he motivates, he knows what he wants, and and you, from the outside looking in, Pete seems to have inherited that. Yeah, I think, I think it come from obviously him being the academy coach and the and the head of youth when I was coming through, and it was instilled from the top all the way down. So whatever the first team were getting taught, we were getting taught, and however hard they were training, we were training probably harder, or being pushed harder as kids. Um, and yeah, I think he took that mentality of the of that and made it his own. I think now with we've obviously you can see how tough we're gonna have been the past few past few seasons with him. Um definitely got back to the best as what as what Wigan should should look like. Um yeah, he's he's definitely a good coach and he's very he's obsessed in the small details. Um, as was Wayne he put, I think Matt he's he's really nailed it down on getting them details right and and the little, the little things in the games, one percent, as that we call them, one percent, as they have a big, big effect on the game. Yeah, no, it was a glorious. I mean, and again, not a Wigan fan, but some of the rugby that the Wigan played last year was, yeah. I mean, Miski. I mean, come from nowhere last year, Miski, absolutely outstanding on the edges. Toby King was reborn there, as you know, on the set, just very, very good indeed. Um, right, you've signed for Salford. Um, Brody Croft, of course, was man of steel the year before you got there. You had the opportunity to play alongside him last season. And again, you've already mentioned the big draw because they were playing great with Bleak and to continue to do so. Um, Paul Rowley, we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, you know we mentioned Adrian Lamb now, Matt, but Paul Rowley himself, um, talk to us about Paul. I mean, again, you talk about motivation. For me, again, from the outside looking in, dear me, he must be a good motivator. Yeah, he is. He definitely knows how to get get the right things out of me and get my my best. As I said, I think I played my best rugby last year. So that is down to him and the coaching staff, uh, Kurt Agassi and Chris and who pushed me the right way and pushing the right buttons to get me playing the right to playing the right way and playing how they want me to play and how I want to play. Um, yeah, he's a he's a he's a really good coach, Rose, and I'm grateful for him taking me 
take him in and, and make him a better player. Um, I think coming into a team a bit older, not, and whereas at Wigan they have me from a kid, so I've they've kind of first they've met me and I'm I am what I am now. It's and I think I've grown as a not as a player but as a, as a bloke at Salford, and I've had a lot of growing up to do and yeah, trying to trying to become more of a talker in the in the team and trying to lead a bit more. Um, obviously, Rose has given me the has given me that that role, and I've and I've got to do it. Now it's my it's my job, and yeah, I'm grateful for Rose for the opportunity to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I'm just going back to, to to last season when Tyler Dupree left. Um, hard to pin it on one man, but obviously you just finished outside the playoffs. It went down to that final game between Lee Warrington and, and Salford. It's dead easy to look back in hindsight, but had the three not left, do you think you'd have had enough to stay in the top six? Do you think that would give you a bit of an edge to just get over the line? I don't think you can put it down to, to one player. Um, it definitely didn't help the situation. Uh, but I just think, I don't know, it just seemed we were just, just in every big game, we were just like a, a whisker off and and that come, and that come to show in the last few games when we weren't getting them wins we were supposed to, supposed to get. Um, yeah, it was frustrating, really. Obviously, there was a lot of things coming out in the press about Salford's finances, which which weren't weren't good to hear and stuff. So, I don't know if that played a part. I'd like to say it didn't, but it probably did. It's not good hearing stuff like that throughout the year. Um, but, yeah, we still we still had enough quality in the team and, and enough quality in our staff and, and the whole organisation, really, to to get in that top six. And that's I think that's where we belong. That is, Salford should be a top six club. Um, and, and with the players we've got this year, we should be we should be pushing for that and and being the playoffs come the end of the year. Yeah, I mean it's interesting though. Again, you're human beings, so all this financial talk about Salford, you know, you've got families to support, etc. It's got it's got to have a bit. I mean, you, you, there's no question about it, is there? Yeah, I just think, in my opinion, it's this players shouldn't be hearing about it. I think other clubs might have been in similar situations. Obviously, with everything around the 2020 season and, and COVID and stuff and. Teams are probably still recovering from that or maybe just recovered from that. So I think we're not the only team in that situation, I don't think. Um, I don't know how bad it is. Obviously, you never know, dear, or how good it could be. Um, but yeah, it is frustrating to hear it and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's annoying. I just don't think the, lad, the lads should hear about it. We're trying to trying to do what we can on the pitch and trying to win, trying to win big games for the fans and, and we're hearing about that every other week. Um so yeah, it's it's frustrating, but like I said, we should we're, we're professionals, so we've got to get on with the job. Yeah, and of course, positivity uh, it would appear. You know, the council. Uh, you know, so yep. I mean, it has swung a little bit. Hopefully, uh, things we need Salford in Super League. You know, and uh, let's hope that that all sorts itself out. I mean, again, yeah. just talking about the mentality. I just want to talk about uh, something that I, I mentioned. I do a program called In the Sheds, uh, where I do a ten minute after every game, summarise it, and I was summarising the um, the game. At at Lee against Leeds, the Lachlan Lamb injury. Again, I, I want to get your insight on this as a player, because one of the things I said at the weekend was, when Lamb got his injury, I was really surprised he didn't stretch him off to get him off quickly, because it must have took him five minutes to hobble around that pitch. Now, as a player, can you remain ultra-focused in that situation? Or, 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 you know, the fact that they've had these injuries, Ipape, Asiata, all the rest of it, now they've got Lamb going around the field at a critical moment in the game, and it was at least five minutes to get him down the tunnel. Does that affect you as a player? Or am I just reading too much into it? Yeah, I'd probably say it does. Seeing a lot of your, a lot of your best players go down and people that you're looking to for, for guidance in games. Um, I know it's happened with Salford, but when we've lost lost players for injury, you are, you are thinking what we're going to do now. But you are well equipped. Um, obviously, coaches, I imagine Rawls plays all the scenarios out in his head before. For the games, whether whether we lose him, we lose them, etc. Like like losing half backs is obviously a big thing, but we've got always got cover on the bench for for, for times like that. And I think that's what um Salford and, and Rose are good at is adapting and, and just playing with what you've got and still expecting the best three players and expecting the result. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course. At the weekend against Saints, you lost Kate Plus early on and had to adapt exactly as you said. But we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> uh, so, as a player, uh, you know, during the winter, Dupree went halfway through last season. Croft goes, Ackers goes. And also, you lost a great servant from Ken Seal. 101 tries in 43 appearances. Ranks up there with 
anyone you want to mention in, in, in the Super League era. You know, people like Ken Seo, he's, he's just a quality professional. Is he players like that? Are they going to be name drops for Ollie Parkinson when he's having a pint and he's retired? How good was it to play alongside Ken? He was a great Super League player. Yeah, great, great player. Very humble, down to earth. Um, takes everything in his stride, I think. Hates praise, hates people talking about him in, in positive ways, just wants to do his job. And yeah, he's someone I looked up to when I was, whilst I was playing with him last year, I think stuff he went through, um, family issues off, off the pitch and being so far away from home, it was just, it was admirable, really. And made me want to play with him even more and, and get the wins for him. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big loss for us, not just on a playing field, but in the in the change room and around training because he's such a good bloke. Yeah, we wish we wish him well. Uh, but you know, despite you know the loss of, let's be fair, fair quality personnel that we talked about, he's been at it again as Mister Mister Roller. Nene McDonald's exceptional capture. Uh, Ethan Ryan, of course, his versatility. He talks about versatility. Ethan brings a lot of that. Uh, Joe Shorrex and Joe Mella, Chris Angerton, who started really well this season. We've talked about Kate Cust already. Uh, North Aluma, who is now in uh, Britain, obviously weren't in. I think, I think he might have been in the twenty-one. Mate, was he last week? I can't remember. Um, he can't be far. Can't be far away. And I think I've been saying all the way through. I sent to Paul in his interview with. Me, um, if you can, if you can stay relatively fit, you can give anybody a game. We should prove the weekend. Yeah, definitely. I think we've got a very good squad on paper. Obviously, with with Kay Custom, George Shorts, you've got players coming from a from a good system there at Wigan. We've won trophies, and I've played alongside, so it's it's good to have familiar faces about. We we got Brad Singer at the back end of back end of last year. He brings experience and that toughness that we need in the middle. Uh, so yeah, I think we've recruited well. Um, obviously, Nofaluma and, and Nene are freaks and, and can do special things on the game in the games. And obviously, Nene has already showed that. We're just waiting for for Nofa to show that now and, and and play for us. It's a hell of a free quarter line that there in terms of size, ability. I mean, it, it's going to be quite frightening, isn't it? Those three, and I'm, I'm expecting it's probably going to be Dion Cross on the left who started the season strong as well. But I joke with Paul Rowley that uh, Ryan Briley's going to need the step ladder to see over the top of them. Yeah, yeah it's, it must be good for, for Ryan to to play behind them and, and know that he's he's playing alongside them with, with how much size they've got and how much space they can create. And obviously, Tim's unreal offloads, it's, it's, it's good for Kez. He should be going to every game excited that he's going to score, I think, because he probably should with the amount of space they get. Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably one of the best, obviously, back lines in, in Super League, I think. Obviously, the size and, and stuff, so it's... It's good, but we are going under the radar a bit, I think, at the minute, which is which suits us, I think. Absolutely. We do a, a segment on our weekly show. We do a weekly show. Tell the lads about it. It'd be, be great if you could watch us on YouTube, Twitter and, and Facebook called Super League Royal Weekly. And in that, we do a team of the week. Uh, this is going to go out after round four's team of the week. So Tim Lefay and Nelly McDonald were picked at centre. Both centres were picked in this week's team of the week. And we do a, a, do a dub over view on that team of the week. And I think for Tim Lefay, I said... Uh, the last time I seen something as beautiful as that offload, it was Ursula Andres coming out the scene in a white bikini. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. It's just Tim Lafay, isn't it? It's just yeah. Tim Lafay. Yeah, there's there's only probably him who can do that. I think with the way he catches the ball in one hand, changes it, all while having the defender come come towards him. In the in that moment in the game, it was a it was a huge moment. If that don't come off, we don't win. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a big moment, and obviously we need big players for big moments, and he, he's definitely one of them. Yeah, when we had Paul on, he said uh, perhaps one of the best finds ever for Super League, Tim Lafay. Yeah, I'd say so, especially where he's come from. I don't even think he was he was playing at that time, just training himself. And and now look at him, he's 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 killing it. Played for Samoa on the back of the twenty twenty two season, I think it was. Um, yeah, he's he's a great guy and, a, and an absolute freak on the pitch. Um, yeah, he's he's good to have at Salford. He's he's definitely one that I imagine kids are looking up to now and and thinking they want to be like him. Absolutely. We've mentioned, uh, we, we've touched on this, Paul Rowley has, p- continues to play down in every press conference. You know, we, we've been tipped for 11, so we'll try and get to 10, then we'll try and get to 9. Brilliant value in, in press conference. Uh, but inside the dressing room, you've hinted at it. That's all well and good. But you've said, you know, with a good win behind you, a uh, bit of good luck and good fortune around injuries. Um, 
Salford could be a bit of a dark horse this season, couldn't it? Yeah, I think to a lot of people call us a dark horse, but I think we are, are quietly confident in the in the change of room and in the, in the training. We know how good we can be. And it's just doing that consistently, I think, for us. Um, staying healthy off the pitch and, and hopefully stay injury-free. But we know there's going to be times where we're, we're a bit busted up and, and that comes with it. Every team will have a, have a period of patch. It's just how you manage them. And, and I think this year we've got the players and the versatility to, to deal with them better. Some night on Friday night, uh, was you there? And uh, what was that dressing room like at full time? Yeah, it was class. It was a it was a massive win. I think it's forty four years that they've not not yeah. beat Saints at Saints. And so yeah, it was a it was a massive relief for all the boys. Obviously, I wish I was out there, and, and it does hurt when you're not playing when they when they win them big games because you want to be a part of it, and you know it's going to be a memorable memorable game. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a class game, and I thought we we showed a bit of grit, which we haven't shown probably for a while. Um, to obviously beat the Saints, who are still still our guys, one of the best teams in the probably top two teams between them and Wigan who are the best. Um so yeah it's definitely good to get get a win against one of the top two teams in the in the league and yeah sure what we're about really a bit of in a statement of intent of what we're hopefully looking to replicate each week. Yeah, absolutely. And we wish you well as well for, for Wigan this weekend when you go up against them at the time of recording that's that's where you're going next. You mentioned Mark Sneed, I think you said captain the one word that you use for Mark Sneed. For me at the moment, arguably the best scrum half in the comp. What he is doing at the moment, he's, he's just got that ball on a string at the moment, hasn't he, Mark Sneed? Yeah, I'd say captain, as in captain of the ship. I think he just steadies the ship all the time, does his job, knows his role really well and, and obviously drags everyone else around the pitch with him. And Yeah, he's playing some of the best rugby I've seen him play. And yeah, so he's a pleasure to play against. He's, he's one of the old guy, I think, and... Yeah, he's he's going to be one of the one of the legends of the game when he when he retires. I think um, there's not many like him, especially yeah. if you can kick the way he does. He's a game manager, game manager, just incredible pedigree. Let's be absolutely honest on that. Right, Challenge Cup draw was last night as we record. Hull KR, <laughs> hey, they're going to be out for revenge, aren't they? Um, you know, will you be back for it? Do you think you'll be back for that one? Uh, I'll be running it close. I think if the physio watched this, he'd be. It'd be fuming if I said I was, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to be back for that. Um, if not, then all for the week after, and if not, all for the week after that. But I'll be doing everything I can every day up until then um, to get myself right for it, because obviously you want to play in them big games. And, and it's such a special competition like the, the Challenge Cup, you want, to, you want to play in them big games. If the rumours are true, and if the NRL did come knocking and buy Super League, we don't know, obviously, it's all speculation, but in the press, the Australians are saying, yeah, they're up for it. And even Rodri Jones now has, I think, come out and said that there has been, in this, you know, just a, a passing comment, hey, nothing more. It's essential we keep the challenge cup, though, isn't it? Because, of course, the NRL don't have a cup competition. So if the NRL did take over Super League, you know, that relationship between them and the Rugby Football League, we, we need to retain the challenge cup in Britain, don't we? Yeah, definitely. I just think the history of it's of it's massive. Everyone knows about the Challenge Cup, you know, from back in the day. On obviously it's on BBC free to where everyone everyone watches it. I think it's it's massive, and that and that trip to Wembley or Tottenham, wherever it, wherever it may be, is is always a big one, and it's one that everyone looks forward to at the end of the year. And it's it's still got that excitement as it did back in back in the day. So yeah, it's it's essential we keep that. I think it's. It can only help the game, having it. Um, obviously, knockout, knockout cup rugby is, is exciting. Absolutely, but it's only three wins to Wembley, isn't it? The Challenge Cup for you guys. If you get past KR, uh, you know a good draw. We uh, saw what Lee did last year. It keeps coming back to it. So if we can keep fit, you never know. Could be, could be a bit of value there for people watching. So with Red Devils, the way they're playing, because uh, with the the way it's been moved forward as well at the moment, so for one of the form teams. Who's to say it won't happen? That said, Ollie, when you do come back, you're not going to be taking it for granted that you're going straight back in, are you? The way the, the team are playing. No, I'll be I'll be very grateful to be back in the team. Obviously, that everyone's everyone's playing playing for the shirt and, and wants to keep the shirt. So yeah, that's up to it's up to Rolls, and I'm sure he'll have a headache trying to put me back in. But yeah, I, I want to play, and I know I can help the team. So it's, it's yeah, I won't be taking it for granted. I, I'll be grateful for my opportunity if if selected and. Yeah, I just want to help the team win and help the team in every aspect I can. Good man. Well, look, where your injury is concerned, 
let's hope that you know once you do get back on your feet, it's important that you're right when you come back, and yeah. let's hope that for the rest of the season, uh, you can be you can be injury free, you can get yourself slotted in there at least forward and and yeah. show what you can do with ball and hand, mate. And uh, you know, I wish you nothing but the the best of luck on that recovery, and also when you you're back in the side, I'll be sure to say hello to you. Uh, when uh, when we bump into each other at grounds, right as we always do, uh, we're going to bring this edition of in conversation with Ollie to a close by Ollie picking his all time one to thirteen, the players he's played with, and Ollie will captain this side. We're going to go through that squad now. Ollie, your position for this one is going to be where? I'll have to go loose forward just because that's where I'm where I'm playing at the minute. I think you're going to cheat here in the second row, but anyway, let's uh, let's see how we get on. Uh, full back. Who are you putting at your full back? Uh, I think it's an over and I'm going Sam Tompkins. Yeah. yeah. He's one of the best to have played that position in Super League. Like, I mean, I was a neutral in that. You'd have been in semi neutral. You played with Sam. That try in the semi final. I mean, talk about rolling back the years. I mean, did you? I actually stood up and shouted at that. And, you know, Sam's caused me nothing but grief in my Bug League watching career. From your perspective, was it a punch the air moment seeing Sam Tompkins do what Sam Tompkins has done all his career against the Saints in the semis? Yeah, I think the Wigan fan in me was was buzzing for him, and I, I felt like he was written in the stars. I just knew it was going to happen uh, at some point. Just just glad he couldn't get the grand final from. Um, yeah, he did he did deserve that moment, and uh, to bow out on that on that moment is, is special for him. Incredible career. Who have you got on the wings? I've gone Joe Burgess and Ken Seal. Right, okay, fair enough. We've already mentioned uh, Ken, in, in Ken in dispatches. Obviously, Joe's left the club. Don't really want to go into any of that, but um, you know, the fact you put him in in your squad, he's a, he's a player, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I think what he did for Wigan back in the day is is, is freakish. Like I've said about a few players, he has he has got that special special talent in his game where he can do weird things that other people can't and. Yeah, obviously, he's left us now and I wish him the best at KR, but yeah, he's, he's always good to play over and I've always loved playing with him. Yeah, I mean, there are certain key positions at Wigan, wingers being one, number 13 being another, where they just seem to produce time and time again players. Wigan, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Right, let's get into your centres. This is going to be interesting. Gone. Tim Lafayette obviously goes without saying he's, as we spoke about earlier, and then I've gone Dan Sargenton. Right, former In Conversation guest. Why Dan? Um, he's just a just a great guy. I think I'd, I I love love playing with him, and yeah, I didn't get a chance to play with him last year because he obviously re- retired and um, made the right decision for him. Um, but when I played with him in the past, I thought he's just just a great guy. And loved playing alongside him. Yeah, we was uh, yeah obviously we we give him a good send off on Super League Raw last year when he retired. We wish him well. He's doing some great work, isn't he, in the mental health space as well. Yeah. So, fair play to him for that. Right, here we go. Number six, who are we going there? George Williams. Yeah, I think he's he's probably the best, one of the best half-backs in the, in the league on his day. Um, yeah, played for England, played in the NRL, done done some special things and won a lot of trophies. Leon Hayes is lucky at Warrington, isn't he, to have George to, to mentor him. Yeah, I think yeah, he's he's got one of the best to to, to play alongside and look up to. And I think he's he's showing that the way he's playing. Uh Leon, I've, I've been impressed with him the the way he kicked the other night. Um yeah, I thought he played really well. So what surprised me about his his defence, he's fearless. You know, he's he's another Rob Burrow, but with a bit more beef on him, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's uh yeah, I mean good luck to good luck to Leon and, and, and like I say, I think that's really important for his development having George. Who's your who's your number seven? Got Max Need, obviously what we said earlier. Um, yeah, it's you don't know how good he is until you play with him. I think, and yeah, I value him every every time we play and we need him. Um, yeah, just a legend of a bloke and love playing alongside him. Do you know what surprised me on on Friday night? I got to mention this on in the shirt uh, that I did. You don't see Mark Snead as animated as he was on Friday night often, unless I don't see it. But yeah. the amount of times he was caught on camera where he was, even when he wasn't actively involved, it was like he was playing every pass. I mean, it, it was unbelievable. To what I've never seen Sneed in that way. I mean, it meant so much to him on Friday night to get over that line. Um, I'm, you're on the field, and so you might hear him say this more than I do. Is that, was that out of, not out of character, because of course he's a winner, but it really came across on the TV on Friday. 
Yeah, definitely. I think he just knows how, how much them games mean to us and he's just found some form that's, that's yeah, it's just working for us at the minute. He is really re leading us around the park and, and getting us them wins. I think without him, we, we may not have had them, them victories. And just quickly going back to, to Friday night, Chris Atkin, I said that if that try is scored by James Roby, Darrell Clark, you know, players of that stature in the game, people are waxing lyrical over it. And I said, I am waxing lyrical over Chris's. What a great try Chris Atkins scored on Friday night. Yeah, he's a he's another player who goes under the radar, I think. Um played so many positions for Salford in the time that I've been here, let alone not all the time he's been here. Um yeah, he just always he always goes about it in a way that, that coaches must love. I think he just gets on with his job and wherever he's playing, he just gives his all and he's he's obviously not a, not as big as a lot of other players, but he's still Still um, tackles quite hard than a lot of other players. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's a valuable member of our team. And, yeah, everyone's everyone wants to play alongside him and is grateful to have him on the team. Yeah, the amount of times he's come off the bench and turned the game as well for Salford over the last few years. Incredible. Right, who are you going front row? I'm going Brad Singleton and Ben Flower. <laughs> oh, the Saints fans are going to love you. Uh, yeah. yeah, Yeah, go on. Yeah, there's two two tough blokes, really close to single now, and I was close to Benny back back when I was playing with him. Definitely looked up to him, to them both really playing playing with him and against him. Um, yeah, there's two two like fearless players who who don't care who they're up against, they're just gonna run hard at them and and hit them as hard as they can, and they expect the they expect that back from him. So yeah, they are two two blokes I'd I'd love playing with. Fair play, right? Hooker gone Amir Borough. I think the fact that I've played with him at Wigan and at Salford, yeah, I just thought it was a, thought it was a no brainer, really. Um, I think he's found some form now and he's got that starting nine jersey, which which I thought he deserved. Um, yeah, and he's he's taking his stride now and I think he's improving each week and, and everyone's going to going to see how, how good he really is now. High praise indeed. And yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, when somebody leaves, it's an opportunity for, for somebody else. And let's be fair, he's had a, a very steady. Start hasn't he? He's, he's he's not done much wrong. I mean, no, he, he has. Yeah, and he's it's a big role to fill. Obviously, he's one in one of the spines. Lost and we lost an international career in in, in Andy Akers, So yeah, it's he's got a big big boost to fill. So it's it's good for him to be thrown in 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 that way. And yeah, he's definitely he's definitely showing what he can do now, and he's he's becoming a leader on the on the field. Well, let's hope we have another big moment. I loved it, uh, the Lee Leeds game at the weekend when Brad Dwyer, the ex Leeds hooker, uh, and uh, Andy Ackers collided. It was a it was a, a wonderful moment in the game. Maybe I may have got one lined up for Andy in that. Let's wait and see. Uh, right, I think you might cheat here. Second round. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not. I've stuck, I've stuck with it. Uh, I've, gone with, I've gone Willie Iser and Callum Watkins. Great stuff. Because Willie's just a. When you play against him, the half-packs will know how hard he's coming for you and, and how hard he works in, in that back row. And he's just such a such a great guy, really humble, great guy with all the young lads, he's always looked after us coming through. Um, so, yeah, he's one of one of the best I've played with, um, a good friend as well. And same goes for Cal. Obviously, we know how good he is. Absolute leader, freak, so hard working. And everyone looks up to him and everyone wants to work hard for him. Um, great captain and yeah couldn't, couldn't play anyone else there really yeah and I said to Paul when he was on I think the, the switch to second row from centre I think it's been inspired yeah yes yeah, it's, it's probably only what rolls in only he could have saw that um, yeah I thought he's I thought he's just just takes it in his stride uh, maybe he might not have wanted to move there but he did and now he's just done done the best for his career. I think he's he's really kicked on again. Um, obviously after all the injuries and he's he's done well to come back from all of them and, and now he's playing his best and leading us around the field alongside Sneedy, so it's it's class. We're seeing more and more second rows now with the ball players out in the likes of Mike Meakin, Callum as you say. You know, back in the day, I mean great player in Ben Westwood who was a real bruising player for, for Warwick. I yeah. mean how close was Liam Farrell into getting into that that team? Because yeah. again he's a player that I have met Farrell. It was tough, really, because I had I wanted to pick Cal because he's my captain. I'd love playing with him, and yeah. it was close between Willie, John Bateman, and Baz. They're all they're all on the same level, but I just went with Willie on on the fact of how good a bloke he is and how close we are. Yeah, no, fair play, man. Fair play. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed the chat. 
Yeah, it was it was class. Yeah, really really good. Enjoyed it. I think with the uh, thirty, I, I put myself there, but I think I could have had could have had Sean Lachlan or Morgan Smithies there because they're both two good two two class thirteens, and I love playing with Morgan, one of my best mates. So uh, I'm not bothered about leaving him out, but I probably should have put Lockers in, and I'll I'll sit on bench. <laughs> did you watch his debut for Canberra? The weekend? Yeah, I did. Yeah, he played played really well. I think yeah. we all expected it. He's he's a, he's a class player, and he's his attributes were always going to suit NRL. I think how hard he works. So yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing for him and proud of him. Yeah, absolutely. He came out of left field. Like, I don't think many people were expecting him. But yeah, as you, I was really impressed with Smithies in that Canberra game. And he also got interviewed uh, as well after the match. I don't know if you, if you saw that uh, on, on the, the one of the NRL shows. But they like him. They really like Morgan Smithies over in Australia. I think he's going to be yeah. another uh, import from Britain that will show those Aussies that us Poms can match it with the with the best of their boys. Ollie, uh, don't go anywhere. We'll have a chat after. But, uh, Ollie, you've been fantastic. Really appreciate you coming on and supporting Super League Raw, mate. And it's been an absolute pleasure to know more about you, your insights into rugby league and the players you play with. Um, all I can say to you, mate, best luck coming back from your injury. Go well for the rest of the season. And uh, thanks very much for your time. Cheers, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.